Hello, Floss Tube. I'm Heather. Link is my homeboy. Today is Saturday, January 2nd, 2021. This is my 2020 whip parade. I know I'm a couple days late here, but we had some technical issues. Um, I tried recording once and during editing, I somehow lost a video file or corrupted a video file. Um, and the second time I recorded, I was editing and I hated it. So, hopefully third time's the charm. <laughs> so, um, so let's get into it. Uh, this is going to be my whip parade. It's also going to be any sort of plans I have, um, including like groups that I'm in and, um, the methods I'm using to keep myself motivated through 2021 to get some stuff done. So, without further ado, um, here are my whips. So, first up here is uh, Hands On Designs Favorite Brew. It was um, a freebie that got released with the Scary Apothecary set. And I started this in May for my Halloween Ornomania. So... This is being done on a piece of, I think it's 28 count um, even weave of some sort from Hand Dyed by Rolanda. And you can see right there that I have um, modified the book because the books like on their side, they're like on their sides, but it's like this stuff is written on the bottom pages. And instead I closed it off so that they look like they're written on the spines. And I will apologize in advance here because I know there's going to be lots of rustling and zipper noises and stuff. Because if I don't put this stuff immediately back into the bags, it's going to be a mess to clean up at the end. Uh, whip number two. Now, this is a whip that I found the other day um, when I was cleaning up my, like, my stitching stuff, all my stitching storage. Um, completely, do I, I have no idea when I started it. Um, I just know that it was passed to me by, uh, Corey of the Craft Jack. They sent it to me after they received it from someone else and I was supposed to stitch it and pass it on and, and I don't know, it got hidden somehow. Um, but my camera's over here. Uh, Not Forgotten Farm, Sit a Spell. And this is, uh, you know, probably like a day's worth of work. And it would probably take maybe a day to finish it. So. And of course I picked my own colors. And I'm not sure. I don't remember where I got this fabric. It's some sort of like. It's like a purpley gray Ada of some sort. And these are not in any particular order as far as like when I started them or anything because um, I'm just not that organized. This is Autumn Royalty from Lindy Stitches. I wonder how many whips it's going to take me to get. Remember that my camera is on my uh, left side. And I'm doing all three of these on their own pieces of fabric. And they're on different colors. Uh, this is Lord of Gourds. And this is on a 32 count Lugana called Scream Inside Your Heart. Please Scream Inside Your Heart from Mystic Fabrics. And I'm doing like some of the DMC, some um, like my own conversion, you know, kidding from stash and everything. Uh, this one is Count of Candy. And this is done on Adobe from Mystic Fabrics, also a 32 count Lugana. And it's a little more orange than it's looking there. It's kind of a, kind of an orangey brown or like a, I keep calling it like a primitive orange. And last but not least, we have the Prince of Pies. This is on 32 Count Lugana in Gilded from Mystic Fabrics. And it's kind of like a primitive yellow. And I'm keeping these in this. Uh... So first of all, I've got like the perfect little needle minder for it. 
it's a black bird with a freaking crown. And then um, I found this bag from Tara, the 805 Stitcher. So I just thought that was kind of perfect. It's kind of fall looking and it's got blackbirds all over it. So love it. Uh, this is another Lindy Stitches. This is called Merry Manatees, also known as Christmas Sea Cow in my house because there's a, there's a British cartoon show called Sarah and Duck that my kids really like. I don't know if it's still running or not, but, you know, we found it on, um, uh, Netflix at the time. And then now they have like a YouTube and stuff like that. Um, and the character, the, the main character, Sarah, she believes in the Christmas sea cow. She has, she has a, an obsession with sea cows and she believes in the Christmas sea cow. So Christmas sea cow it is. And this is a 32 count opalescent even weave, probably a Lugana from Hand Dyed by Rolanda. And I'm I'm kind of doing my own colors and doing some of the the DMCs and stuff like that. So I've got most of the the little manatee there. He's missing most of his tail, but he started out looking very unfortunate and looking like a sperm. So gray blob is better than sperm, right? Uh, next up, we have the Hands-On Designs, um, what, Festive Flamboyance, the Flamingos, Christmas Flamingos. So this is Falalamingo, and I'm doing this all in 32 count um, Lugana from Mystic Fabrics. It doesn't have a name. Um, it's a little more green than what is showing up here. It's kind of a seafoam green, and I'm doing like my own colors. Although this pink needs to come out because um, the the main body of flamingos I'm using I'm using flamingo from Color and Cotton, and um, Gina of Hanging by a Thread had acquired a skein of the flamingo for me when she went to Keepsakes recently, and she sent it to me and I started to stitch with it and was like, no, this is not going to work because the pinks are too similar. So I'm going to rip that pink out and find a new one. Uh, we also have Flamingo Bells. And that's how far I am on that one. And that's the pink I have to rip out. It's fine. It's fine. And Flamingo all the way. Now see, this is the one where I figured out I had to, I needed to rip it out because this is, that is Flamingo. And I started stitching some of the, like one of the wings on the, on one of them. And it just, it was blending too much and didn't look like there was any sort of uh, demarcation between the two. So I haven't figured it out yet, but I'll get there. Oh, and of course this is in the perfect bag too. This was another bag from Tara, 805 Stitcher. Christmas flamingos like there's even a flamingo with the there's flamingos with scarves not the same scarf but you know there's flamingos with scarves and flamingos with the the stripedy um stockings flamingos with hats like it was meant to be oh next up we have Lindy Stitches Mistletoe Loitering Society and this is being stitched on another piece of that, that same um, like seafoam green color because I got a yard of it. Um, <laughs> I saw I saw Misty had it, um, had a yard of it during uh, one of her fabric games. So and that's um, I'm sure it's like some called for, some not, because it calls for some DMC and it calls for a few few fancies and I just pulled from stash for it so next up we have another Lindy Stitches because I'm just obsessed with everything Lindy Stitches rooftop cocoa shop and this is being done on a piece of 25 count Lugana in barely bronzed from sparklies and um 
mostly called for or the conversion like the DMC conversion but then like on the cups there I did go ahead and throw some etoile in there the riff line added some etoile because why not and that's being stitched over two two over two on the 25 cap Next up, oh, I'll have to insert a picture here because I don't have the cover photo. This is um, Antique Celtic Sampler from Elizabeth's Needleworks Designs. Elizabeth's Needlework Designs. I just call it here, there be monsters. And this is being done on a piece of 32 count gilded from Mystic Fabrics. 32 count Lugana. And it's my own um, it's my own silk conversion, mostly dinky dyes, and I think there's like one most sale in there. Uh, next up, we have the Autumn Lane Stitchery Dark Queen of the Sea Cell, and I'm stitching this on the, um, the end of the sea fabrics uh, special fabric, 32 count Lugana. I've barely started. What is it called? Bewitched, I think maybe. And I've got one fish done and started another. See with this one being kind of a choose your own adventure sal, um, cause there's different things you can choose in the different parts. Um, I, I'm okay being behind on it. Like I was, I was a late, start on this one anyway because I ordered the fabric you know like in January or no it wasn't even then it was like March or April or something like that and uh or no wait how many parts of the salad have there been I ordered it when like the first two parts were out however whenever that was so I was already behind when I when I started it and um with the choose your own adventure aspect it's okay being I'm okay being behind I'm good uh, next up, Lindy Stitches, Dracula's Confession, and I'm doing the, um, the vertical orientation there. And this is being stitched on a piece of 32 Count Lugana in Bugs and Hisses from Mystic Fabrics. And this is kind of a, it's a little more of a orangey brown, um, but I've barely started. Just that little corner motif. That's it. But I do love this one. Next up, uh, we have uh, <clears throat> Vulture Villa from Lindy Stitches. This was in the 2020 fall issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. And this is being stitched on a piece of 28 count even weave, maybe a Lugana, um, from Seraphim Fabrics in the color Aurora. I just thought it looked very fall because it's kind of a dusky, smoky, purpley green. Next up, we have Strut and Tom from Lindy Stitches. And this is the, um, I got the kit. So it's got 32 count Topa Lugana and all the called for flosses and everything. me and Jaffe were calling it that damn turkey because um I don't think she was wanting to buy it and then like I showed it to her and was talking about it and now she just calls it that damn turkey she's probably farther on hers than I am on mine though uh, next up we have like a cherry blossom from stitches through the years and on this one um so you see the alphabet here? I have basically squashed that down and um, I might 
find some sort of words or you know move some motifs around or something like that to um fill the space i'm like 12 whips in more than that probably and i still can't remember that my camera is over here but um anyway this is being stitched on a piece of 32 count lugana in let me find the fabric tag Spring Breeze from Mystic Fabrics. And it's my own conversion that's not quite complete, but I have enough to, I have enough to stitch, you know, this, that, like that top corner and everything. We have the Halloween Butterfly from Olesia Nova Jelova. Halloween 2019 just cross stitch. And um, I started this in Mania for one of my ornaments. This is being stitched one over one on a piece of, I, I don't know if it's 28 or 32 count Lugana. It was from a bits bag from Mystic Fabrics. Um, it's, it's like very subtly dyed with something. But uh, yeah. And I'm just stitching the butterfly. I'm not stitching the, the Happy Halloween. So I don't know why they called it a butterfly. It's definitely a death head moth, but whatever. This is the Tiny Modernist uh, 2020 Halloween Sal. This is called Halloween Ouija. And I'm stitching this on a piece of 32 count Jobelin in Tombstone from Color and Cotton. Uh, this was in the 2019 Halloween box. And I'm doing all sorts of funky colors for the borders and um I don't know about the the corner motifs and stuff yet because I haven't worked on this a lot obviously um but the house is going to be and like the house in the middle is going to be in this um it's called witching hour from most sale I thought it'd be perfect it's kind of like a dingy blackish olive green with like hints of pink like pinkish orange is kind of a peachy color I guess um and then the rest of the the border colors are also most sale I thought I'd have some fun with the uh since it's like a sort of monochromatic or mostly monochromatic design I'd have a little bit of fun and add some color to it because why would I leave anything alone? Okay. Starting to lose integrity here. Okay. Uh, next up, this is another one of my ornamanias. Spooky Stitching. That's from the 2019 Just Cross Stitch. And this is from Evdokia Nikoleva from Ponochka. And I'm doing this one over one on a piece of that 28 count Aurora and that's that's all I did literally so um, definitely need to get a move on a move on with that one okay next up I think this is the last of the four yep uh, spiderweb mandala this is also a punochka and this is also from Halloween 2019, just cross stitch. I'm stitching this uh, two over two on a piece of vampiric from Under the Sea Fabrics. And I brightened up the purple and the green a little bit because they weren't, I think the, the like the original called for DMCs were not showing up too well. So just had to, had to brighten it up just a tad. 
but I'm still using Dancy and all that. So, um, up next is Spring in My Heart from Barbara and Designs. It is from the spring issue 2020 of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. And uh, what do you know? I'm not doing called for. Um, so this is a piece of, I don't know if it's 28 or 32. Based on the size of the X's, I'm gonna say it's 32 count. Opalescent uh, Lugana in Sugar Plum Fairies or Sugar Plum Fairy from Under the Sea Fabrics. My own random conversion of colors. And up next we have the Chinese Zodiac Sal from Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. And this is being stitched on 32 Count Lugana in Reflection from Mystic Fabrics. And that's coming out pretty true. Um, and it's got, I'm using all the called for DMC and um, Petite Treasure Braid. So, and that one is completely, that one is completely released. So, I, I, I stayed caught up with it for about half of it and then didn't after that. So, I'm, I'm kind of impressed with myself. <laughs> uh, next up we have... Ugh. It's a freebie from Barbara Anna called Light. The fox not a dress. The fox not a dress. And I have barely the fox's face. Although someone told me it kind of looks like like a, like a little girl or something on her on her back with her skirt up. Like a big puffy skirt and those are her shoes. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I can't unsee that now. So you're welcome. And I believe you can still get that for free. Um if you go to Barbara Anna's um, Instagram page, I think it's like in her link tree or whatever. Um, also, another freebie from Barbara Anna. This is called The Key. And this one's a burden address. And I'm doing it on a piece of, I think this is 14, no, it's 16. 16 count Ada, like I think it's just like pink Zweigert. It's, it's much pinker than what's coming up here. Oh, and the, the light one is done on, I think it's a 16 count gray Ada of some sort. Looks like a home dye or maybe a, an over dye or something. But, so, of course, not doing any of the call for colors because of who I am as a person. Next up, we have... <clears throat> Pardon me. Night Walk Down from the Blue Flower. And this is a full color and cotton conversion on the floss. And I am stitching it on a piece of Changing Leaves. 32 Count Lugana from Under the Sea Fabrics. And give me just a second to... I have a whole bunch of parked threads because I was like, when I got it out last, I was just trying to go for a page, like a full page finish, which I got, but it also meant I was leaving all these threads hanging out. But I love this. Look at that fancy, fancy disco turkey. I really love the conversion. Um, I love this fabric. I'm upset I didn't buy more of the fabric. It was a fabric of the month in 2019, and at the end of at the end of the year, um, Leslie, like, uh, does a whole like mass dye or whatever of of the the uh, fabric of the month, and like whichever one gets purchased, like whichever one gets purchased the most, I think, or maybe it's the top three, get put back, get put put into a regular line, and that one did not, so. Kind of kicking myself for not ordering more of it. Um, Owl Forest Embroidery Atlantis. And I bought the kit, which came in a box, but it doesn't have a cover, so I had to steal the cover of the box. And I just dropped the whip. Um, and so this is on, I think it's 32 count, does it say on here? No. I'm pretty sure it's like 32 count some sort of Murano or something um, with really bad margins. So I've got 
and because the margins were so tight I, I had to do a center start which is not my preferred but she a long she a long girl but yeah so I do like stitching on this is just it's a little awkward just because of like the margins and stuff it kind of makes it hard to put it in a cue snap and I kind of got a like eight by eleven it. Although I do have a Lowry stand now. That was that was my Christmas gift this year was a Lowry stand. So um, maybe I'll be able to finagle it in there and be able to use it better. Uh, next up we have the Light World map from Legend of Zelda. This is a this is the free pattern version that I got off of the Sprite Stitch website, uh, created by Lord Libidin. No, not Lord Libidin. Servitron. Actually, I'm not sure. Does it say on here anywhere? It does not. Hmm. Well, maybe I'll find out and then I'll just like insert it on the screen. But um, it's basically in the last place you guys saw it because I went ham on it the first month and got that first page done and then like in like 17 days or something and then I kind of lost steam after that um, but I have this is a free pattern so again I'm not like that's where the bottom of like technically the bottom <clears throat> the second page goes to here but like the bottom row of pages is only like 11 so I've just combined it and uh so page one ended about here so uh I don't know maybe a third of the page but I do have goals to get this out more this year which we'll talk about when I get to the plans section Oh, and I bought, I actually got a uh, floss buddy specifically for my full coverage. This is a 90 pocket floss buddy. And it's got the little pocket here for the, uh, the highlighter. So I've got a highlighter with it all the time. And it's got a little loop. Like I think it's for scissors technically, but I put my little Oort container on there. And then I've got scissors with a, it's actually an earplug protecting them so that this one's kind of all contained in itself and like any extra stains and stuff are in here and I just tuck it inside and close it up. So this was actually really easy to like grab and go with it. All right, up next we have the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery Animal Almanac Sal. It was the 2020 Sal. So it's finished. Um, I got up to August and then fell off there. So, but it's okay. It's okay. And this is done on 32 count witches brew from Mystic Fabrics. Oh, and my map is done on um, 18 count off-white, antique white, beige, I don't know, Ikru, Ada, whatever. Not white. Not quite white. Dirty white. Whatever you want to call it. And next up, we have the Kaluna Brightburns catalog for Witches Familiars, or as I call it, the Familiar Cell from Ingleside Imaginarium. I got up to month seven on this one before I failed to keep up with it. And I've still got quite a bit of border there to do. Um, and then five of the, five of the familiars. And this is on a piece of 32 count Lugana in Monet from Picture This Plus, kindly gifted to me by Jaffe when she decided she doesn't like Lugana, so that's fine. I will take it. And next up, 
We have Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. Ghouls Just Want To. Ghouls Just Want To. Um, I kind of want to change it to Ghouls Just Want To Have Fun. Just because, you know, Cindy Lauper and all that. This is on a piece of that 28 count Aurora from Seraphim. Um, my own conversion of colors. It's, uh, I mean, it's kind of the same scheme. It's just, um, I did some, the, the fabric I have is not nearly as dark. So I had to kind of adjust the, the colors a little bit. And the ghost is in glow in the dark because basically anytime I stitch a ghost, it has to be in glow in the dark. We're almost there, folks. Uh, Lizzie Kate, Spring Smalls, uh, Buzz. I'm doing this on a piece of 32 count, um, some sort of like a violet. It's a little more pinky purple than what's showing up there. It's looking really washed out. Um, some sort of like violet lugana i don't know if there's a specific dye or anything um i got it at keepsakes and it wasn't really labeled and i'm doing this in the color old santa from color and cotton i have like an entire color and cotton conversion written down for this so uh next up we have the 2019 Halloween style from Tiny Modernist, Sleepy Hollow. And I am doing it like the big layout here, not the individual drums. And this is being done on 32 count Lugana in Vampiric from Under the Sea Fabrics. Um, originally, I was going to have this done and ready to... Um, I was going to have it done and have it sent off to get turned into a, like a wall hanging, um, and be able to brag about it at StitchCon, but then StitchCon didn't happen. So I lost steam on it and yeah, but I've got part one, part two done. Uh, part three is about two thirds of the way there and part four, I haven't even finished the border on but, um, I think this is mostly in the call for DMC, but like. The words and uh, the border are done. The words are done in a couple of uh, gassed, no, classic color works. And the border is done in a, in a color and cotton. And then the ghosts are done in glow in the dark. And I think the stars are done in like silver uh, light effects. Uh, next up, we have HL's Moth from Kathy Barrick. And I'm doing a purple conversion on this one. I'm stitching it on 32 count Belfast, maybe? Yeah, 32 count Belfast. So yes, it is a linen. Um, in Dragon Fruit from Color and Cotton. Um, Amy of Amy Loves Toads passed me the fabric. I think it might've been a fabric of the month and she doesn't stitch on things this bright, so. And then I changed it to purples so that it kind of wouldn't get washed out by the fabric since the fabric was so vibrant red. Really do need to get back to this one. And we have the Spring Hedgehog from Kulakova Stitch. AKA Rupert. And this is stitched on a piece of 32 count Jobelin in Petunia from Color and Cotton. Um, he's just very labor intensive um, with all the different, um, the different kinds of stitches and the, all the constant color changes and everything. So um, 2020 was not the best year for my you know, brain intensive stitching. But hopefully this year will be much better and I will have more brain capacity to work on him. And Lindy Stitches, the Peacock Keeper, aka Disco Turkeys. Look at all those lovely birdies. 
This is also being stitched on a piece of 32 count Jobelin in Petunia from Color and Cotton. And that's where I've gotten. So, I don't know, a little less than half, I would say. Beautiful boardies. Tiny, tiny boardy. I do love this piece. And I love it on the pink fabric. Um, and I'm doing my own conversion. I'm sticking with, like, basically the same color scheme. I just pulled, um, I just pulled different flosses from my stash. There's some silks in there. There's some overnights. Oh, do 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 And then I've got just a couple more whips here. Uh, this is the, what is it actually called? This is just called the Animal Crossing Cell from Cunning Cross Stitch. Uh, it's based on Animal Crossing New Horizons, which took a lot of my stitching time this year. So, um, but I've barely gotten a start on the frame here. And this is just a piece of um, 28 count white uh, Charles Craft Lugana that I picked up at Michael's. And I'm just using the call for DMC on this one. Did I say this was cutting cross stitch? I hope I did. If I didn't, I did now. And the last but certainly not the least that is actually a whip is Celeste from Scrixel's Stitches on Etsy. Um, I don't think they have any sort of social media presence. At least I couldn't find one, but I will, um, I'll definitely link it down below and show, I'll post a picture. And this was supposed to be like my last project that I was gonna finish in 2020. And then the last few days of 2020 were just super busy. And yesterday was, I was busy doing some stuff, and so I didn't really get to stitch much. But I am hoping for a finish today, because there's really not much left to do. There's just, like, the little bits on her, little bit on her feet, her wing. I mean, not that you can really see the pattern there, but, like, there's a little bit of wing that goes into another page, her feet, and then there's, like, another big shooting star and some of those little stars. So... It shouldn't be that big of a deal to get done. Oh, there's some floss from my map. Yay. Um, and then this one will be a this one will be a whip very soon. This will be a whip as soon as I get Celeste done. It's the Funky Menagerie cell from Lindy Stitches. And I'm doing it on this uh what fabric is this? I think it's called Sugar Plum. But I think I wrote it down somewhere. I did. I wrote it down on my floss card. <laughs> uh, this is 32 count Sugar Plum Lagana from Mystic Fabrics. So, um, so yeah. And then I'm using the Call for DMC, and um, I'll use some. I'll probably throw in some hand dyes and over dyes and whatever um, where it makes sense. Because, like, it's supposed to be animals, so, um, you know, wouldn't make sense to replace a brown with a blue or something. So, um, but with that, um, for my last video, I did do my drawing and I did provide the winner with their copy of Funky Menagerie. Um, I will insert a picture here of the random number generator and my list. And it was Brandy Kamani who won, so congratulations. Um... And I thought it was kind of funny that a one of the one of my local stitchers won out of out of the people on the list that <laughs> you know could have been picked. Um, it it chose the local one, so that was pretty pretty funny. Um, so if you're stitching that along with us, then yay! Um, but I'm hoping to get started on mine today or tomorrow. So. 
Okay, um, so yeah, that is it for whips. Let's get into plans. Um, so I am, I'm an admin in the Enchanted Stitching Group, and I'm trying to resolve to be a little more active as far as like actually stitching and everything. Um, last year I wasn't as active as I wanted to be. So I'm going to try and be a little more active. Um, but I'm also going to go over, let's go over some of my goals here. So for 2021, my goals, I would like to get my map half done. So it's, it's eight pages and I finished one and about a third of another. So I need to finish two and two thirds of a page. Seems doable to me if I actually make an effort to do it. Um, I would also like Atlanta's half done. So um, I've, the way that the pattern comes for Atlanta's, it's got like one big pattern, but then it's also got one where you like cut it apart into smaller chunks. And I'm using the smaller chunks one because it's it's a lot easier to like attach those to the piece as I'm stitching. And I've kind of grouped them and I'm gonna make sure and get two groups done to get it halfway done. Um, I would like to FFO, I would like to first of all, finish stitching the last four of my Halloween ornaments. And then I would like to have them all FFO'd, which should be easily done just because of the fact that it, I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm probably going to take honestly a cardboard box. Like I'm not even going to go buy a mat board or anything <laughs> or whatever, or foam core. I'm going to take a freaking Amazon box and I'm going to cut it up and I'm going to wrap the things around. And I'm probably just going to glue them and then I'm going to slap some felt and, and some ribbon hangers on them because they're not going to be heirloom pieces. So I'm not, I'm not worried about any sort of fancy finishings. Um, I would also like to find frames and get um, Birds to the Bows and Black Pearl framed and up on the walls because those are a couple of my favorite pieces that I've stitched and I would really love to have them on the walls. Um, I would like to track the number of stitches I stitch. So, um, Last year and the year before, I had started getting really good at tracking when I start things, when I finish things, things like that. And I've got a good handle on that, but now I'm kind of interested to see how many stitches I actually do in a year. Um, doing some basic math, knowing how much I can stitch in a day, I estimate that I could stitch about 168,000 stitches per year now. That's in that that's saying I only stitch because I know that there's at least three or four days a month I don't stitch, usually Saturdays because Saturdays is usually full of grocery shopping and chores and things like that, and I don't get as much time to stitch. So that's saying twenty eight days a month at about five hundred stitches a day. So I wonder how far off I am. Now yesterday I only stitched forty nine stitches, so not off to a good start so far. <laughs> But I know there's other days where I stitch seven or eight hundred. Um, just depends on the project I'm working on and um, how much time I actually have to stitch in, a, in any given day. Um, I would also like to get down to 20 whips, which I'm hoping I should be able to do that um, <clears throat> by curtailing the number of starts I have. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm using that as a reward for WhipGo. So I am doing WhipGo this year. Um, and I am also doing, um, I'm doing two different boards. So I'm doing a small board, which is things that I could easily get done, um, in a few stitching sessions on it. And then I have another board where it might take me a few different sessions because like it might take me a month or two or something like that. So uh, maybe like a page finish on my map is on my large board. Um, page finishes on like like a cherry blossom and stuff like that. Um, but like the frosted pumpkin stuff, you know, I finish those. I can finish those in a couple of days. 
So my goal is to only start something after I get a bingo on my Whipco board, on my, um, on my Smalls board. If I finish, if I get a bingo on my Smalls board, then I am allowing myself a new start. And I'm doing, I do have a free space in the center. I'm not using that as additional stitching. Um, so, you know, for me, a bingo is, of course, a horizontal line, a vertical line, a diagonal line. Um, but I also use the, you know, the four corners in the middle and um, the coverall. Now, however, a coverall is going to allow me to purchase a new project bag. And not that I need them, but... I had always refrained from buying a um, so much to love bag because they were always outside the price range that I had at the time of purchasing bags. So I feel like if I get a if I get a coverall, then I'm gonna treat myself to a so much to love bag. Um, and then also if I get a large, if I get a bingo on my large board, I'm allowing myself to purchase a pattern. So I've got, you know, like a one, two, three wish list and, and the Frosted Pumpkin wish list and stuff like that. So, um, but my, I had thought about doing no new starts and then I just, I was like, you know, I know myself and that's not where I am. But by limiting my starts and, and making them a reward, that will, that could easily make me, um, you know, that could easily drop my whip count because, you know, it's going to take a minimum of four finishes, you know, and that's if I do the, the four corners and it's going to take a minimum of four to get me a bingo and allow me a start. So, um, yeah, I think that's really it. Um, I am, I am registered for StitchCon and I'm going to Weekend A, which is the, the June 10th through the 13th. Um, so fingers crossed that things go well, <laughs> that um, we don't have, I know there's another strain. And so, um, I just, I'm hoping that the, the vaccines become widespread enough and I'm hoping that, you know, all these regulations and shutdowns and lockdowns and everything like that are actually going to help. Um, and not, not just because I need a vacation, but also because, um, I'm sure all of our nurses and doctors and hospitals and everybody need a vacation too. So, um, wash your hands, wear your mask. Do the stuff you're supposed to do. Care about other people. Um, all right. I am hoping to be back in a couple weeks with a regular floss tube update. So that's an that's kind of a that's a, a soft goal for 2021 is to get on a regular recording schedule or at least more often, not taking six month breaks and coming back at you with just random parade videos, which I love parade videos. I'm sure a lot of you love parade videos, but I'm sure a lot of you love the progress videos too. So uh, hopefully see you in a couple weeks and um, be well. And I hope you have a happy 2021. Bye.